communities after having served their time. He founded Thrive for a Change in 2014, and the nonprofit works to provide housing assistance, life skills training, and job preparedness to the men and women, our brothers and sisters, our parents, our children, who have now returned home trying to restart their lives as what Mr. Hanna prefers to call them, returning citizens. We'll find out more about that later. He also strongly supported Amendment 4, travels nearly each year to Tallahassee with the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition to continue pushing for the, well, restoration of their rights. The coalition is based in Orlando and has been successful in doing what they do. But Mr. Hanna also has other interests and other skills as well. He does event food catering, and next month in October, he'll be opening his first restaurant. Hannah's Soul Food Kitchen, which will be located in Belle Glade. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, we'll find out more about that in a minute. Mr. Hannah, Ty Hannah, welcome to Coco Chats. Yay. Thank you for coming. Not a problem. So tell us, I'm just curious, why do you prefer the term returning citizens over ex-felons just returning curious. citizens sound more professional and ex-felons sound so harsh mm-hmm. but you know they are they did commit crimes they did so that's kind of and that's their and that's their past so returning citizen is the right way to say it oh you prefer that too miss jillian yeah they did their time they so they're time. returning so they're returning back to citizenship to citizenship but then what if the what if they return and then they commit another crime? Then they, could, we, still, we can't make projections based on what if. No conjecture. Oh. They're still okay. returning citizens. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um so how involved were you in the movement that created the um you know, the return of the returning citizens right to vote? Were you involved in, in that much? Yes. You I were? actually went um to Tallahassee three times. For advocacy day, and what we did is went up to Tallahassee to fight for the rights for the people to be just to be able to vote, right? Because they deserve, deserve it. to vote. And after I think they did Florida their time. is just one of I think it was four, just one of four states mm-hmm. that prevented that we know continue to disenfranchise right. returning you know citizens. So, but now, do your ex felons that you work with do they care about the right to vote? Now they do care. Now they care. Um, most of the people I've been reaching out to about pay, getting their fees and to get get their fees paid, yeah. they they want to be able to vote now. Is there any particular reason that you're I never hearing? asked them that question. Huh? I never asked you them that question. You don't ask them that? No. Oh. No. You're just glad that they yes. are willing to vote? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Man, that would kill me. Why Why ask. do you never ask the question? Because some, some things, just personal. Mm-hmm. You know, some people will just say, well, Mr. Hanna, I would love to vote. This is the reason why I vote. And then some of them just just quiet. So I just never ask them. But I will start asking. That's a good question. Yeah, yeah. But what do you think about the poll tax? I mean, if somebody committed a crime, they should, you know, have to make up for that, shouldn't they? I think that's that's crazy. Nobody shouldn't have to uh, pay a fine just to vote. Our ancestors fought for that right for us to vote, regardless of what color you are. They fought for us that right to vote, so they should be able to vote. Now, in Dade and Broward County, the poll taxes is not together with the restitution. So when people go to prison in Dade and Broward, it's different. It's different. They it's a separate charge. Yeah. In Palm Beach County, it's together. So mm. as I didn't re- yeah. so Palm Beach County is the. Is the only well the, doing my research is the only city that the has the re- county, county that has the restitution and the fines together once they release from prison they have really? to pay yes I didn't know that yes sir. okay now we know That's why news. they do that crazy yeah mm-hmm. so tell us why you created Thrive back in 2014 um I had two uncles one was a drug dealer and one was a <laughs> habitual criminal. And to this day, honestly, he's still getting in trouble. He actually, he just got out of jail, uh, probably like a month ago. See, Not even a month ago. Uh, the one that used to sell drugs is now actually working, uh, cooking. I haven't got a job probably two years ago, and he decided that he wants to cook. Hmm. 
So now he's still on the track, but my other uncle is. <laughs> okay, and so the uncle that keeps getting in trouble, mm-hmm. do you refer to him as a returning citizen or is he an ex felon? I, 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 I refer to him as a habitual, <laughs> meaning he continued to do the mm-hmm. same thing over and over again. And he's the oldest in the family. Mm. Wow. And so because of those two guys, you thought, what, I should create an organization to help to them? Help, to help them back on track. Well, re- the real reason why I uh, created it, I used to work to the Federal Halfway House, which is the where the feds released from prison. Mm-hmm. And t- I was seeing the money that the feds was getting from the residents once they released from prison. Mm-hmm. And, you know, once they, once they get a job, if they get paid every week or every two weeks, the first check is 50%. Then after that, it's 25% every week or every two weeks. Hmm. But when I started Thrive for a Change, the money left and it just start from the heart. Mm. Just start having from the heart. It wasn't about mm. the money. It technically is not about the money because I don't do it in five and a half years and yeah. only got probably like three grants since I've been in business. <laughs> Yeah, you know. Wow. So it's in other words, it's not about the money. It's not about the money. Yeah. What is it about? It's about helping people, helping my people, my brothers and sisters. Once they, you know, did their time, and then what the crazy the part term. about it is, is that when they release from prison, they still like they're in prison because you know you can't you can't, you can't find a decent in. job. You can't, you, the Palm Beach County is dealing with homeowner associations, so you know they're denying people, mm, regardless of what the sense. charge is, they're not letting them find no decent where to stay. So that's why I'm one of the ones in Palm Beach, the grassroots, just walking with the people mm. once they release from prison. God bless you. Thank mm. you. So now from your experience, so what's the most important thing that, I'm sorry, the returning citizens Thank you. need when they return home? What, um, from your experience, what would you they say? They need a lot of stuff. Mm, like well, what? most of the people that once they release and they call me, I at least give them two weeks to to get their mind right. Because, mm. you know, once people have been in jail 15 years, maybe five years, you know how the world has changed. You know, mm-hmm. technology changed. That's true. We, we, don't, we do emails now. We don't do – we do emails and we talk on the phone. We don't have flip phones no more. You know, right. there's no like pay phones, you know, on pay the phones street on the streets anymore. So it, yeah. it, and then still in prison, they do have pay phones. So it's a whole lot. So what I do is they need personal hygiene items. Most of them need somewhere to stay. Mm-hmm. Most of them need decent jobs. Because, you know, if a drug dealer has been making decent money mm-hmm. every day or every hour when they get out, how, how, how do we expect for them to... You know, they get a job. They get a King. job at Burger King, making eight seventy five mm-hmm. or nine dollars when mm-hmm. they've been making whatever they choose to make more than the more boss. Than, yes, at those places, right? Yeah. Wow. So, it, so how long they've been gone does that's yeah. important. Yeah, it's very yeah. important. It's I, very important. Yeah. Hmm. And it actually, it affected a lot of people because some people is not used to the new way that we, the new world. That's what this is, a new world. They done been set oh, down five. Oh, this new five, digital yeah, world. Yeah, new digital world. Like the one Miss Jillian operates. Right. They're, they're not I used to that. <laughs> and then, you know, some of them get frustrated. And then and I always tell them, and go back, and I always tell my people, if you had a job in prison, you always put that job on a resume. Because technically, it was a job, a job when you was in prison. Mm-hmm. If you was a cook in prison, put it that you was a cook and just put that you're a cook in prison. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's, a lot of people don't know that. Mm-hmm. So it's like they they get released and they get released into a foreign country, basically, with different language right, and everything right, else and right. behaviors. Everything changes. You know, everything even the people changes. that they were familiar with right. have moved away. The neighborhood looks different. Right. New buildings, right? And everything. So you're walking into a foreign land, right. That you supposed to belong to. And remember, I told you lately, I've been getting a lot of you know, emails and a lot of you know people don't want to go back to the same place where they committed their crime, so mm. they want a new. New they world. Wanna, yeah, absolutely. And, and it's hard for me because I don't have buildings to put them in. And, you know, I don't have a problem with allowing them to stay in my personal space. God but bless you. It's, it's time for my personal space to be my personal space <laughs> and them to be able to, you know, be in their own space. But it's, again, and like I was telling people last night, and I say this again, Palm Beach County and state of Florida is not a second chance state because look how they put their people, they put them people through hell. 
to just to get a job and get a decent place to stay. Mm-hmm. Well, now I remember though a couple of years ago, Palm Beach County removed you know that question on on the um, application and Riviera says, Beach and Riviera Beach did yes, too. Yes. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, at least that's two cities yes. that are trying to yes. be yes, you know, welcoming yes back. But, so then you have places like Faith Farm that has those halfway houses and yes, stuff. But that you have to, if, if only way you go to Faith Farm, got to be alcohol, drug and alcohol. If you committed crimes, they don't too much allow. Really? You know what I mean, yeah. So you have to, it, it, they, we need a program that will allow them to at least get three months to save some money. And then they can be able to go to another place. Like me, you always discuss for them to be able to mm-hmm. live comfortably. Mm. And in Palm Beach County, they don't have that. But what about that Palm Beach County, that ex-offender reentry initiative? That doesn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you? Okay, X now that question, eh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, w- and one thing I was going to ask you too is what what is the, what what do people need to understand about returning citizens? But as you were just talking about, you know, the life that they come back to and the world that they come back to, that's it right there. I mean, we need to understand yes. that, you know, they're what they're experiencing, right. you know, behind those locked, you know, bar doors. Right. That that's not, you know, the same. With right. Their, you know, out it's here. a different mm-hmm. reality. It's an yeah, alternate reality. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yeah. Hmm. So what is it that you want to accomplish with Thrive? Well, my goal is to find a building that I can house the men and women to be able to stay at least three to four months or three to five months. You know, they have to pay rent at least 300 a month and they, the rest of the money they save. So when it comes to the month for them to get ready to leave the program, they can at least have a, a, a certain amount of money to give them another apartment hmm. for the next person to come in. And it basically is just a recycle just a recycle because people really need help nowadays like how caribbean people do it yes they come here mm-hmm. they live in tight quarters large numbers and in, mm-hmm. in small spaces some sometimes one bed sleeps like two and three yeah, people yeah, yeah. and they rotate that bed mm-hmm. different shifts they work on and then by the time they i wouldn't say caribbean people i say foreigners they because they'll come out immigrants. Right. right immigrants they'll come they live in those conditions for a short period of time save all their money yeah. save their money and then they move on uh they get like take off their and training wheels move forward and move yeah. forward yes and uh, does so. that make sense to you too sir? yes yes <laughs> okay. so tell us what's the most difficult thing about working with um returning citizens it depends on the charges that they have. Mm. And what do you mean? In what sense? Um, like murder charges, like murder charges sex. Uh, sex crimes. Um, what, those ones are horrible? <laughs> um, robbing, stealing, all of that. That the, 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 the harshest crime is, honestly, is the robbing part. Because... Really? You, yeah, because, you know, people are trying to get jobs. And you don't went out and uh, stole something from someone. Mm. So that's that's one for robbery, for robbery, robbery and theft, right? Yes. See, but not murder. No, because some people, it, it some it, it, when I look at the the um, bio, if they defended themselves, it's a different from you just going out and murder and somebody, somebody, and then defending yourself and kill somebody. Wow. wow. So that's more like a crime of passion. Of- yes. A uh, reflex, yes, kind, re- 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 yeah, reflexive, re- yeah, type of response to to a situation yes. as opposed to yes. uh, and just going out and just killing something. Right, right, okay. Hmm. And you know, I want to I want to go back again to voting because that's like huge right now. Yes, it is. But I and I'm just astounded at how people are really, 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 really pushing voting, and mm-hmm. not just for returning citizens, mm-hmm. but generally. I mean. Even, I mean, I'm starting to see, you know, signs everywhere, you know, and I'm getting all these texts and these, you know, emails from people saying, you know, are you registered to vote? You know, today is the day to, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, and so, and I'm like, what, what is all of this about? You know, why, why is this such a push to vote even with the ex-felons? Because as I think, you know, 
you know, um, LeBron James, mm-hmm. the basketballer, mm-hmm. um, you know, he donated, I think, $100,000 mm-hmm. to the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition. And then I read yesterday, mm-hmm. um, Bloomberg, Michael Bloomberg yeah, gave yeah. us I read that today. $20 million. And, and, and uh, the uh, attorney general trying to do an investigation on him because he, I just posted it on my Facebook page. Trying to, what is it, what is the attorney general suggesting? That's in New York State, right? Yes. Yeah. That what? That uh, Michael Bloomberg is not doing something right. In just from what I was, in just, and I have to look at it again. Yeah. Yes, they doing a, trying to do an investigation on him. Yeah, but we know where that's coming from. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but what, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Hmm. Okay. So, I mean, but did it surprise you at all when you heard that these people who don't have to deal with, you know, they're not returning citizens. They probably don't have any in their orbit, but they're willing to spend their own, you know, hard earned cash, lots of it to, you know, to undo the poll tax, Mm -hmm. essentially. I mean, what what did you think of? I mean, what, what, did that surprise you? Nothing surprised me nowadays. Oh, okay, because that surprised the surprise heck out of me when I saw it. They just need to let these people live their lives. They done mm-hmm. did their time. Let them vote. Mm-hmm. Regardless if they vote for Republican or Democrat, let the people vote. I mean, and that is a right that we are given as Americans. As citizen, as yeah, citizen. as as citizens in this country. Right. And and I still don't get that even so, though So ahead. yeah, you get it. Of course you get it. Because let's first of all look at who's the highest incarcerated our numbers, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in Florida, no? in Florida, m- most of those ex felons are white, believe it or not. Okay, but thought, across the country. Well, across the country. The numbers? I don't know. Okay. I know about here. Okay, so um, most of the ex felons are white. The ones that are in Florida, it was a majority of them. Okay. Which, you know, which really surprised me when there was so much pushback I, I, from the legislature. So you're saying that there are more white incarcerated people no, in no, Florida? No, no, well, no. More what, white ex-felons, okay. the ones who are no longer okay, incarcerated. So, okay, so let me, let, let me yeah. clarify what I was saying then. Okay. If the, the most, if the majority of the people who are incarcerated and lose their rights to vote mm-hmm. look like us, Right. And now you're saying you have more white people who are who need their rights restored. You, you start looking again at more disparities, right? But then I was thinking that maybe even though this is a Republican-led state, I thought that maybe they felt that these white ex-felons would still be voting Democrat, and mm-hmm. that's why they're you know mm-hmm. fighting and pushing back. That's why I feel that's, too. Yeah, because yeah, I'm that like because at first when I heard you know understood that the majority of the ex-felons in this state. Well, white, I was like, okay, we should be good then, you know, with the, with the crazy white Republicans. Mm-hmm. But no. Why no. they got to be crazy white Republicans? Well, How about are. crazy Republicans? Oh, sorry. They are, though. Yeah, crazy they Republicans. Are. They are. I'll just do the disclaimer. <laughs> uh, the opinions of this show is not the opinion of the radio station. Right. <laughs> okay. But now we've got a, a few, only a few minutes left. I, wanted, I want you to also talk about, please, Mr. Hannah, about your side hustle. Uh, as they say in the hood, um, your restaurant opening in, in Belle Glade. Um, why Belle Glade? Um, honestly, the reason why I picked Belle Glade because the rent is very, very, very cheap mm. in Belle Glade. And when I uh, went out there, everything came inside the restaurant. Tables, chairs, the stove, the grill, everything. Oh, you got a full... A full restaurant. Woo! Full restaurant. Seats 30 people. Um, Even with social distancing? <laughs> Well, 15 with social <laughs> right. distancing, right. but since they open, reopen, it's 30 seats. But that's the only reason. And it's time for Bill Glade to get back to the mm-hmm. back to the basics, as we say. Uh, good you, food, loving mm-hmm. food, Sunday meal, mm-hmm. you know, fun, friend, and family. Mm-hmm. But we don't have a soul food restaurant here. Well, I, I'm, I'm just in the work. In the making. So um, I know the name of it is going to be uh, Hannah's Soul Food Kitchen. Mm-hmm. And I noticed in the uh, image, I mean, mm-hmm. in the logo, mm-hmm. it was an image of a woman there. And Which I, is my mom. Oh, I was going to say, who is that chick? Oh, it's your mother. <laughs> so I'm, glad oh. she, I'm glad she didn't say who's that chick. <laughs> she was going to say that, but I'm glad she didn't say that. It's my mom. Your mother. Yes. Why? Because that's my heart. That's my baby. And it is seven and a half years since she's gone. So, oh, your mother passed away. Yes, that's an honor. Yes. Oh, 
And and so she would be okay with having a restaurant in in Belle Glade? She mm. was born and raised in Belle Glade. Oh. Mm. Mm. So you're going back home to the roots. Oh. To the roots. Returning then, citizen. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then once I get, you know, established so, here, then I'll come on this side of town. So what what are you going to move back? No. You're not going to move back. No. You're just going to drive back and forth every day? Ms. Those, you ask me that all the time. How many people travel to Miami every day driving back and forth? A lot of forth? people. A lot, a of, lot people. of people. And Miami right. is way farther than Bill It Bay sure is. From Palm Beach. 30 oh, okay. minutes. So sure. are you going to be driving there every day? Yeah. Well, we're going to be open Monday through Sunday for now. Okay. Monday through Sundays. And then only Tuesday, we're going to um, do cooking classes, which is home ec. Bring again back to the basics, teaching people how to cook. Really? Yes. People like who? People like I mean, like children like, or like you, Miss Dozier, <laughs> that didn't, didn't need to like learn me. how to cook. You know, people. A lot of people don't. Oh, know she how don't to know how to cook. Nowadays. I got know how to cook. I'm sorry, I wasn't in that group. <laughs> I had to ask. Can I ask him a question? Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Yes, ma'am. You spoke about looking for a place to a building for mm-hmm. it. Why not look for land and build and employ some of those ex. Uh, uh, felons or sorry, returning <laughs> citizens right. for them to build that's like almost like habitat. You no, know, that's a good question, but I just feel like it's if I it's, it's more to build than that's how I, I feel like it's more to build than just have a building already. With, so, with, like, I don't I, have I, the funding. I get it, but this is how I look at it. Yes, ma'am. Building one. Um, you have you you will get contractors that look like you. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get grant money for the same thing, just like you, mm-hmm. um, f- uh, f- to build this type of project right. that nobody else is doing. Right. So people throw money at it. Yeah. You know. So I think look for land, and then you create the type of facility that you want. Right. Maybe it's a facility where you have a main building, and you know, go from so like a. a, a a college campus right, right, where right, you have right. you have the freshman dorm, you have the sophomore dorm, you have the mm-hmm. senior apartments, you mm-hmm. know, so a facility like that. But, but get look for land and build. Why mm-hmm. not? Well, that and then maybe sense. he can also put his um his uh, returning citizen housing on yeah, that same. That's right, but that's what, what, I'm, talking oh, that's what, what I'm, I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So build. Yeah, she she caught up with us, <laughs> us millennials. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> that's that's the difference. <laughs> you got two minutes, Miss Doge. You got two minutes. Well, and in those two minutes, Mister uh, Hannah, let people know how they can reach you if they want to support your um, your uh, thrive for a change, or if they want to visit your new restaurant, Hannah's Soul Food Kitchen in Belle Glade. Thrive for Change. Our <laughs> website is www.thriveforchange.org. My number is 561-334-8609. Or you can email me at uh, th- tyhanna at thriveforchange.org. And the address to the Soul Food Restaurant is 949 West Canal Street in the beautiful city of Bill Glade, Florida. 949 West 949 Canal 949 Street. 949 West Canal Street. Have you been there before? Bell but Bell Glade, yeah. I just oh. haven't been to Zora Neale Hurston's um, museum. Yeah, when they had it there. So it's, it's not there anymore? Zora Neale Hurston? It's not yeah. there anymore? No, it's been gone. There's a museum in Belle for Zora Neale Hurston. Yeah, we, I didn't yeah. know that. That's where she's from. One. I did not know that. What you mean? Coco Wire. I'm from New York. I'm from New York, and I knew that from New York. <laughs> Their eyes were watching God, baby. <laughs> what do you think the story was wow. about? No, but I mean, I know, but but the fact that they have that, um, that, uh, festival for the Zora Festival up north. I thought she was from up there mm-hmm. in northern Florida. Pugley, baby. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a new uh, interesting fact. Okay. Right. Great. We all learning right. has something. Got fifteen seconds, Miss Doja. Thank you all for tuning in to Coco Wire and listening to Tyron Hannah, the founder and CEO of Thrive for a Change of the Palm Beaches, which works. To save Restaurant. returning citizens. Restaurant. 949 West Canal Street in the beautiful city of Bill Glade. That's where his Thank new you. soul food restaurant is, is going to be. Right, we done. Oh, shit. Sorry.